Hello and welcome to this session on billing and charging evolution. My name is Anna Guzman. I work for Cineverse and currently also the chair of the BCE subgroup of IDS. There are a few things that I would like you to take with you from this session uh, because I think they are of utmost importance. First, the TAP format as we know it is no longer being developed. It's currently in maintenance mode which means for any new services that you intend to launch, such as narrowband IoT, mobile IoT of any kind, um, 5G roaming, you would need to consider billing and charging evolution standard. This is the standard developed by GSMA for especially the new services, but any data can also be moved from TAP to BC once you're ready. So with no further delay, let's get started and um, talk about why BC is being developed. What is BCE? What is the same in as in TAP and what is different? Uh, is BCE actually simple? Uh, what kind of charging models are supported? And what you as an operator need to consider when implementing BCE? Uh, also, is BCE ready to roll out? And if not, what, are, what is still missing? So why is BC being developed? Uh, current TAP process and exchange is very uh, cumbersome. There are daily exchanges of TAP files. It's on CDR level. TAP format is rigid and complicated to update. Uh, it's labor intensive. Uh, it's manual process to support the current IoT models. It's not tailored really for the new industry developments. There are not enough decimal places. Um, does not support future services and charging models. And even though we have developed call type levels, they are not really being used efficiently, especially not call type level three. There are different interpretations on how to populate CAMEL CDRs. Uh, it does not support compound aggregation and it is difficult, even impossible to include some of the existing discount models. Other than that, we know that uh, roaming data has grown immensely in the last few years. Um, for most operators, wholesale and retail are decoupled. Uh, new technologies are evolving. Um, 5G roaming is already taking place, as is narrowband IoT and LTM. So another efficient support for charging models that support these services was needed, as was the desire for simplification and automation. And other factors could be named, such as roaming has become a commodity service now, um, not to mention that in the last months it al was almost non-existent. Uh, there was cost reduction needed because operators do not make as much money as they used to, um, and a solution for both future uh, roaming and interworking was needed. So we say rest in peace, TAP, and let's go on to BCE. So what is BCE? Uh, BC is all about aggregation, so no detailed records are sent anymore. Uh, it's in ag uh, agreed intervals between you and ro your roaming partner, so most likely there will be no daily exchange of data anymore. Uh, uh, I would envision monthly exchange. Um, new commercial models are enabled for roaming, such as threshold-based charging. Then there are aggregated volumes, which are then included in so-called BCE reports, which are then basis for invoicing. Reconciliation is key in the BCE process because it ensures pre-invoicing audit of data and makes sure that invoices are 99.9% correct. So billing and charging evolution BCE is designed with the future in mind and it's can be used when TAP is not considered the best option, so when you don't need a CDR level data. Uh, definitely to be used for future services, uh, but also to move GPRS traffic from TAP to BCE, and eventually, uh, later on maybe, to move voice and SMS from TAP as well. BCE is also about simplification, and it can be as simple as you want it to be, because you can apply just a network charge or a very simple aggregation, you can also do date, bulk data billing. Um, then I would have to mention that uh, the format of PC is XML and it's not ASN1 anymore as it was in TAP. And the whole process of BCE is simplified. So basically you could say that BC is made for the wholesale roaming discount agreements and definitely not suitable for retail charging. 
And then cost of implementation may vary from case to case, depending on how much you intend to do in-house and how much you want to outsource, uh, because that would then uh, have an influence on the charges. Flexibility allows for manual process reduction. You can bill your partners monthly, quarterly, even yearly, if that's what you want. Um, more process implementation choices. There's no need to send individual records uh, anymore. And TAP, there were good things about it. So we just decided to keep what was good from TAP. And uh, here's a short comparison between TAP and BC. So BC reports are not sent daily. Uh, usage data report, usage summary report are exchanged on aggregate intervals between parties. Um, the aggregated volume in BC reports can be used in support of wholesale invoicing and settlement. And uh, in cases where we need more in detailed information, you can still get the detailed CDRs. BC and TAP will coexist for a period of time, many years to come, I would say. Uh, but um, packet switch data could be sent using BC process and circuit switch could still be sent in TAP. And let's face it, not all of your partners will be capable to use BC for a certain amount of time. But if you have MIOT traffic or M2M -M traffic that you can differentiate on your network, you can monetize it using different processes. So the new billing and charging processes will continue to work in parallel with TAP for the foreseeable future. So what's the same as in TAP? We still decided to use TADIC codes. Agents may still be used as they were for data cleaning and financial clearing. Uh, there is no impact on current fraud processes because something you exchange once a month is not going to contribute to high usage reporting. Exchange rate process, if needed, will be using GSMA standardized exchange rate tool and payment processes will be the same, so direct payment or netting. What do we think is better with BCE? Uh, it's flexible enough to support most current and even future charging models that we know of. Also, new current and future services such as mobile IoT, Wi-Fi, 5G roaming. Um, there can be different frequency of exchange. Um, there are common processes to support monthly and periodic discount settlement needs. Uh, aggregated usage models are possible, even encouraged, and compound aggregation models are supported as well. When to use BC? BCE can be used where TAP is not required to bill end subscribers. Um, and of course, BC is used for wholesale roaming discount models, which TAP does not support, for example, tier charging. There's another example per unit charging. You can charge per volume. In TAP, there's a potential for massive increase in CDR numbers, which will generate really no revenue. Uh, especially if uh, aggregated usage record is not adopted in TAP. And it can be rounded to gigabyte based on monthly aggregated usage in BCE. So that would then be the solution. 5G support, um, just to mention briefly that uh, billing and charging evolution standard does support 5G standalone already, mm -hmm. because we do have an aggregation dimension with even network slice value. And such values can be easily updated and added to the uh, standard, unlike it was the case in TAP. So what should you consider as an operator if you intend to introduce BCE? So first and foremost, you have to make sure that you have decoupled wholesale and retail. So you use basically your own PGW data packet gateway to build your own subscribers, and you would use BC just for wholesale reconciliation. Uh, it's really not that difficult to get ready because GSMA standards are in place to be used and solutions can be implemented right now. And I can tell you that we, have, we know of operators who are already testing it and are ready to launch uh, later this year. So let's go. Uh, how do you go about implementing it yourself in-house? So I'll really quickly go through this drawing where you generate some usage as serving party, run it through mediation, where you then distinguish what goes into TAP and you create TAP as you usually do, send it to your agent who then sends it to another agent and to the HPMN. 
there's a second stream of data after mediation, which would be then going into PCE based on maybe IMSI ranges, APNs, RAT types, and that would then be uh, packaged into BCE reports, so UDR, USR, if that's required and agreed. But for sure, you would need to generate billing statement report, apply rating to it, send it to your partner for reconciliation, and if everything is fine, then you create the charging document. There's, of course, the uh, way of outsourced approach where you, as a serving party, just need to figure out which of these three options you use. If you have tab creation with your uh, agent, you would just need to send all mediated records to them and explain what goes to tab, what goes into BC based on the criteria I mentioned before. Uh, if you create your own tab, you go about it as usual, no changes there, send it to your agent. And in parallel flow, just after the mediation, you send the SGW records, which your agent then would convert into the BCE reports and reconcile it with the HPMN reports, served party reports that they get from their other customer or another agent. And then if everything goes fine, um, the settlement will take place and uh, there's minimum, minimal um, involvement involvement from your side sorry so what paperwork needs to be done in order to commence with bc uh, so you need to make a roaming agreement and aa13 is updated with the bc uh, material tariff notification we will not use rex iot instead there is a tariff template included in wa20 to wa200 document Testing will uh, be taking place for every new service launch, just like it is the case in TAP. Commercial launch letter uh, of any new roaming relationship will need to be also uh, signed, and that is included in PA50. Frequency of exchange, TAP is daily, and notification files need to be sent if there's no traffic. Uh, BCE reports, this frequency is agreed and uh, the rules are described in TD201. Rejects and disputes in TAP is done through the RAP process, while in BCE we have a description of the process in the document called TD204. Of course, business intelligence and reporting systems would need to be adapted to, uh, to report the BCE traffic. Invoicing, both for TAP and BCE, the invoicing processes are included in BA36. For BCE, I will just say that uh, there is a potential to create a single invoice which covers both TAP and BC. So when can it be rolled out? Actually now. Uh, we have all the documents that we need to implement it. Uh, TD201, which I would recommend you read first to get familiar with the process. Uh, it's common billing and charging processes. TD200 is the Technical Implementation Handbook, TD202, BC Reporting, TD204, Dispute Reject Reporting, TD205, Sample File, TD206, Detail Data Record, and TD207 is the Testing Procedures for BC. So finally, is doing nothing an option for you? Uh, BC deployment means growth. Uh, you may think you don't need to worry about BC just yet, but you may be missing out on revenues from traffic on your network. Maybe you were approached by partners to monetize IoT traffic, but said no because you thought you were not ready. Now you can really see how easy it is to be ready. So if you can easily identify m 2 traffic and you already have decoupled wholesale and retail billing and or you are rolling out 5G roaming, you are definitely a very good candidate for BC. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.